Right, a junction point. I'm out on the in the woods. What a surprise! It's the 22nd of January 2021 now. I'm doing a lot of reflections back over the past year actually and putting them on various sites like Facebook, YouTube, Blogger and um, sharing um, thoughts from last year. And around about this time we weren't really talking much about um, coronavirus. In January we weren't. It only just got out that they had it in or home, however it's called, in China. So it was all very new. And we knew that those sort of areas often got bugs. So we didn't take much notice of it. So a year on, what a change. We're in lockdown at the moment, but we're allowed to exercise. But it hasn't stopped. More and more, more people have died in the last couple of days than ever before this year, over this year. Despite lockdowns, restrictions, not, it isn't stopping it. Basically, it isn't stopping it because people are still communicating and p visiting each other in their homes and spreading it. And then they go out and visit other people. It's not really working. And they're now saying half the masks don't work. And they want to try and flog a new mask now. It's, it's all big business, isn't it? It's like selling weapons, isn't it, in a war? Oh, come on, we've got a new mask now. It's got a little filter on it. I've had one of them for years, from um, decorating days. They used to put a white mask with a little filter. Yeah, I've bought, I've bought some more filters, actually. Um, so anyway, this is uh, a year on. And um, I've walked across town from where I live into the woods. It's a lovely sunny day on the 22nd of January, 2021. A few people out. I've already passed at least three people. Uh, some with dogs. Um, to me, it feels about the same. Um, we haven't had the rush of lots of people yet. So it's a bit early. People are still waking up, probably. So they reckon a lot of people are actually staying in bed more. Saves it at trek. Uh, there was even this program last night, just a brief mention of people actually working from home and just staying in bed and working in their bed and complaining that the wires get in the way and they keep spilling their coffee and their jam sandwiches in the bed. It's quite interesting really, these little things that are coming out, how people are coping, what they're doing. Um, how people's clocks are changing, biological clocks. It's basically... There's, and, oh yeah, but the other thing, apparently people are showering less because there's no rush to get to work, to go to school or do whatever else you do where you've got to mix in public. It's interesting, isn't it? I like things like that, really. Little snippets of information. I've also been listening to an audio pod on... Radio 4, it's um, Book of the Week. You, it's on at quarter to ten in the morning and half twelve at night if you miss it. And it's called <laughs> Pastoral England. Um, there's an actor called Brian Dick who's um, doing the audio narration. It's all about Cumberland, farmer, how he grew up, probably about my age actually, maybe a bit younger, how he grew up and how he was introduced to farming by his father and grandfather with slightly different views but when it came to his turn there was drastic changes in the countryside for the worse he's now trying to revert back using some new methods but trying to recover some of the old stuff which was much more healthy for the animals and the environment there was one sad thing what he said in yesterday's episode where he said um, when he was out with his dad or he was out with somebody it could have been his son even um, and there was ploughing going on and they noticed there were no seagulls chasing the plough like normal birds would chase the plough rooks, crows, everything and, uh, and, and somebody said well it's because the, the soil is dead it's been 
destroyed by modern pesticides and things like that and what they feed the animals is just destroyed the bacteria everything in the soil he said it's lifeless and that, that really meant I thought wow that's really important you know um, that, that was a very good little tiny window into the state of our world actually you know so what the planet's saying we've got to get rid of these humans before they get rid of us yeah so there is a movement in the farming community they've got to reorganize how they feed their cows because that was another sad thing they were keeping these cows 200 cows locked up permanently just for beef just for meat and how the, the, the diseases would spread so quickly through a herd. Well, they're all hemmed in in these sheds. I mean, it's quite interesting, really. Um, this type of farming, intensive farming. They do it with chickens and pigs. He said, how oh, the, the ordinary little farm has grown into an intensive farm. How You don't really see chickens running about in the farmyard, you know, with manure or pigs snorting about you know they've pe farmers have been concentrating on one type of product they would call it and the same hedgerows removed intensive farming with for um wheat barley maize all that sort of thing yeah it was it was it was good to listen to these little snippets and he was talking about his life when he was a little boy and how his grandfather had taught him so much because his dad didn't have any patience. His dad was really the main worker, if you like, of their farm. So he had a lot on his mind. And if he made a mistake, his dad would really have a go at him. Whereas his grandfather would take him under his wing. And, and he spent some, quite a bit of time with his grandfather learning the basic rules of the land. How his grandfather knew them. Lots of snippets of information you picked up. <sighs> yeah, I like that. I think it's finished today, that book. I'm, I'm thinking of even buying it or getting the audio pod and listening to it again. I did miss <laughs> some um, bits and pieces because I was doing something else and I wasn't concentrating. But And last night when I put it on, I fell asleep. At half past 12 to listen to it again. I fell asleep, <laughs> missed it again. <laughs> So yesterday's episode I've missed, so I'm going to catch up on iPlayer. Yeah, yeah, and these people that love our our lovely, beautiful countryside and that. And he, towards the end, he was saying how he looked over his land, and you could still see the basic outline of what he saw when he was a boy but how much it had changed as well and he knew there's a lot of work to do to try and restore it back to health yeah so anyway this is my walk up here I'm just reflecting on that at the moment um, I, you know, I've got worse things is I've just looked at my phone and it looked like someone tried to scam me out with £38 um, this is happening quite a lot now because people are out of work there's going to be a lot more crime going on a lot more crime especially um, digital type crime, internet and all that what it was they tried to grab £38 they got I must them what happened the other day, Microsoft did warn me but they didn't warn me until after I provided some details it was to do with Amazon, and Amazon came up, said, oh, you have been chosen. Now, I should have seen for it straight away to have a free phone. It was one of these up-to-date, absolute Samsung something or others, and um, 5G, the whole works. So I thought, oh, no, that, I won't bother. I do, I, normally, I just pass them by, but I ticked on the box. And then they said, yeah, all you've got to do is provide these details. I foolishly done it. Now, the good thing, though, is I'm, I was broke. You know? 
I've had, I had actually, actually absolutely no money in my, I had five pound in my account. So when they tried to get this strange figure of money, 38 quid, and I know I've paid all my bills, and I know all my direct debits, and I know that there was no way I could think of anything for £38 because I pay for food by cash. And if you go to Tesco's and you try to use your card and you haven't got any money, which I wouldn't do, it will say insufficient funds and it won't pay. So somebody has tried to get 38 quid, and as far as I know, I haven't got anything annually coming out. I paid everything. Insurance on the washing machine paid, TV license paid, BT paid, poll tax paid. It almost wiped me out, that's why I only had a fiver in there. And so basically, I'm, I've only just found that out just at the start of my walk. And I thought, no, I'm not going to the bank now. I'm, it's, we've had awful weather. I'm getting out while the sun shines because it's supposed to rain by three o'clock this afternoon. Tomorrow's supposed to be all right. So I've decided to come for my walk. It's happened. It's going to be a common occurrence. I think it nearly happened again last night with Netflix. Um, I was thinking of getting Netflix again, although I have been a previous member. I rejoined, new password, everything. And then, I can't remember, but I had trouble with PayPal once before. I, uh, other people offer me PayPal. Like, when I go through paying my council tax, the council use PayPal. It's their account. So that's, but when I try to use my own, there always seems to be issues with it. <sighs> so anyway, but then I provided details again to this PayPal lot of my bank. My big number, anyway. So I won't be surprised if it's somebody else. Well, at the moment, I can't really... Unless I use my card, I can't pay for this. Once again, it was an offer. I prefer the offers when they come through BT, proper BT, because sometimes they'll offer you um, a way into Netflix. BT will. But, um, so I've got to sort that out when I get home. I've been raking my brain, thinking, £38. That's a very strange sum of money. Um, I haven't got, um, I got rid of um, contactless, because I've been done over the last year, once and nearly twice, <sighs> by someone who pinched um, seven ninety nine from me using the contactless feature. Um, so I got all that solved and I got the 7.99 back. <sighs> you know, I got that money back. But, um, so there's a lot of this going on. I think it's going to grow. Uh, I don't trust the banks in many ways. I, I don't feel safe of I mean, with that account, because I've had issues with that account before, and I'm going to ask for another card now, because I've had issues with that card before. I don't keep a lot of money in there. No, I don't hardly keep anything in there. I only put any money in there the moment I'm going to pay a direct debit, or I'm going to, for some reason, I need to do it on that in that moment in time. Most of the time, I do leave a bit in there, but basically, it's too dodgy. And now I know, think, oh, someone's got my, my details in my bank account. Not all of them, but they've got some details. And uh, so anyway, that's just something living in this modern society with internet and all the fraud issues that are going on in our lives like all the time there's people trying to rip you off like I said I got rid of contactless although they were encouraging contactless because of the Covid where people didn't want to actually handle physical money 
But that played into the hands of these fraud people. So it's a bit of a worry, really. It's definitely a bit of a worry. Thank God. Because when it came to the Netflix thing, it was late at night and I was getting tired. And I thought, oh, it's probably, they can't get the money because there isn't enough in there. And I was nearly going to transfer a tenner over and then change my mind because I was tired. But you see, that's how it happens. So I'm, I haven't got any faith. I don't like ordering online. I don't, I, don't, I don't like doing any of those sort of things. I don't trust the system. I really don't. I always pay, most of the time, I pay people with cash. I don't like using my card after several incidents that have happened and I've been nearly robbed. Um, now, even though that was supposed to be my bank coming through on my phone, right? Might not be. That could be another scam where they're pretending to be my bank making out. Because when I went on the... I was suspicious the other day about the um, the Amazon thing. And I, about an hour later I did go on my account to see if they tried to take any money. And they hadn't. And there was no mention of a, a transaction or nothing. That was uh, on the day when Microsoft informed me that this was a dodgy site that I was on. So, although I've got a phone call, Christ knows everyone gets your phone number these days. I'm getting a new phone. It's about time I had another one. I don't want a smartphone really though, because I mean they've got their complications on their own. These, you can be track and trace and everything. You, you can't get away from this big brother society. what it's turning into I seen I was um in my daughter's flat the other day and we were looking it was night time about 11 12 at night and I was, she's we got a lovely view of the sea and everything and I was like looking out at like the sun or, or something the sun had gone but it was it was a nice scene and I noticed this luminous big thing and it was all about COVID and the law. And it was in red and luminous yellow. And what it was, it was a trailer with a board on it. And it was saying about law enforcement. You know, it was very Big Brother-ish. We both gasped when we saw it. Brave new world, isn't it? Brave new world. George Orwell knew a lot as did many other people, of course, in sight. He thought it would all happen by 1984. Well, it did. Most people got colour television. The internet hadn't come yet then. Not yet. The invasions here, though, it not just a biological smart virus. That might not even be biological exactly. But we got um, things in, in the waves. Things in the trees. I, I watched this other thing the other day where um, it was up on Mendip Hills. Apparently they got these devices hidden in the walls up there in remote areas which can track how many people pass that wall. They're trying to, they had said that it's for trying to count the numbers that are used in the, the Cheddar Gorge area. And I thought, bloody hell. Okay, that's, they say that's being used for that, but what else is going on? I bet there's cameras in these bloody trees. No wonder the rich want to get to Mars. Is there life on Mars? Said David Bowie. Over and out for a minute, everyone. First video, reflective, visual diary for 2021. I haven't been out for several days. The weather's been horrendous. You wouldn't believe it. We've had a storm, Christoph or something. Fierce winds, gales, rain. People are flooded all over the country just to look at a few world events. People are having to leave their homes. It's, um, in Manchester, 
I think Liverpool, all those areas, the River Mersey is, is, is um, bursting its banks. Um, I don't know what's happening in Somerset. We're very low. I expect there's lots of, there were lots of precautions were taken a few years back. Of course, another big event I must mention before I go. Donald Trump has left the White House and Joe Biden has moved in. The fun begins because basically such a large number of people voted for Donald Trump. Massive, historical record, apparently. Um, they were very equal, um, almost equal in numbers. That's what all the fuss was about. That's why the Capitol Hill was invaded by Trump supporters who thought that's what they should do. Um, he's left. We don't know what's going to happen. He'll bounce back. He was a businessman. He, was t he would take the losses. But he would see the gains that he's got from it because he must have made loads of contacts. But I'm not supporting him exactly, but he was the only... He was the one I seen most up front. I did feel that about Obama in the beginning, but I got a feeling people they get influenced by other things. Trump stood his ground to the very end, although he did do some very polite departure messages and letters. Because he's got to think of history and how they look at him, I suppose. So that's it, folks. Um, I could go on and on about the COVID thing and what's going on with in this country with, with, the, with dealing with it. I mean, to be quite honest, it's horrendous, really, what's happening. I heard this morning that the health minister is actually going to stop giving out the vaccines for a while until they're more fairly distributed. At the moment, those people aren't even getting it. Why stop it now? Why don't they just give it all out? Give all the doctors, the pharmacies, the, the vaccine. I just heard that this morning. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. What's another thing there, stupid thing they're thinking of doing? Giving all COVID people 500 quid. What on earth is that about? And they're obviously going to stop the people who, who are um, on... Um, Universal credit, they're going to cut their money. I don't know if that's going to happen. That's being debated. And apparently they're going to cut. They, everyone got £20 extra a week when COVID started and people were furloughed and all that sort of thing. They've now decided they're going to take it away from them. It's like the homeless people. They've kicked them out of the, the hotels that provided um, accommodation for them when COVID first came and they needed to get people off the streets. They're all out. They've been sleeping out in the winter. It's, a, it's a really bad how it's been dealt with. And I'm not surprised it's spreading like it is. If it is, they're saying record numbers of people have died. More than everyone who died as a civilian in the Second World War. More people than that have died from COVID in our country. I think it's been very poorly handled. The whole thing. The whole thing. They keep changing their mind. They keep giving new rules. Then stopping. Easing. Then sort of restricting and no one taking any notice. Meanwhile, they're protecting themselves. They're having the jab. They're going into isolation to keep away from everyone. Yeah. Okay, over and out, everyone. This is Sheila. About one o'clock in the afternoon. Enjoying a walk before the rain.